Hey everyone, this is uh, day five, week one. So this is actually our last day in our uh, painting the portrait under different lighting conditions. Uh, we've done uh, cool, overall cool light with uh, cool lights, cool shadows. We've done a lighting that has a very specific hue to it and it's a dominant you know, color in every single mix that we uh, painted that day. We did sunlight, you know, super saturated colors, just shapes of uh, cool, cool colors against, you know, very geometric shapes of, of uh, warm colors. We, we did a four color palette trying to um, emphasize the uh, richness of the grays that are available to, you know, all of us if we accept the uh, limitations of the palette. And today we're going to try like a very... Uh, almost like uh, Instagram-y kind of app uh, light, which is just like a blown, blown, uh, bleached uh, light, like almost overexposed light. And we're just going to push a little bit of the hues and the saturation that we see there. So if the light has like a yellow tint to it, we're going to make it like a yellow, green, yellow, blue, kind of like a weird color there. And if the shadows appear to be warmer and have like an orange, almost magenta-ish tint to them, uh, we're gonna push that also. So I think the, the, the coolest thing about this is that all of our paintings from day one to day five in this first week, they're gonna look so, so different. And that's the most exciting part. So let's see how that works out. And, and remember, every single week, there's a different theme. The idea is to push ourselves into you know, if, if we are in a comfort zone, if you guys are like me that, you know, almost everything I paint is just people. And, you know, many times I look at my Instagram feed and I'm like, oh my God, it's just portraits. It's, you know, it's like 95% portraits. But, you know, throughout my life, I've painted so many different paintings. Um, but it's, it's weird how you kind of fall into this, you know, comfort zone. And while you may be super happy and the art that you're doing may be of the highest quality, it's very nice to just put yourself in, in situations where you're gonna have to like sometimes improvise or sometimes just go back to very basic things, you know. So, you know, next week it's gonna be a whole new thing, but let's enjoy and let's close this week and let's see if we can make, you know, a, a, a nice array of paintings showcasing a uh, nice kind of broad possibilities within, you know, the realm of uh, portraiture. So that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Okay, uh, let's get started. I, um, I started to block in my, my drawing the way I usually do it. I, I, I try to go for like a big um, contour shape. And uh, I'm, I'm usually fairly... Um, confident about what I'm looking for but and this is kind of cool because you know it's it's actually good to uh, show you guys you know uh, something that happens quite naturally when I paint and <laughs> you know this is like an everyday thing um, I started struggling a bit with my with my drawing and the reason I think I was struggling is because I started paying a little too much attention to the features and I wasn't really understanding how they were relating to my bigger shape to my outer contour which would you know which is probably the most important shape in the beginning because that's the one that's actually gonna um, give me a sense of where in the um, where in my page my image is gonna sit you know that's actually the basis for my um, composition. So you're going to see me sort of feel that, yeah, the uh, features were okay, but then I started kind of feeling, no, it's actually, it's not quite, you know, f like a frontal, you know, uh, portrait. And I don't know why I kind of kept going and kept going with the eye, like trying to refine the eye. And then I was like, okay, I got to stop. Like this has to stop. And I, I went for my axis again. Um, just simple, simple axis for my nose and my mouth. But, you know, I was still not super happy about it. There I am cutting into the uh, bottom plane of the nose, just trying to make it smaller because I think e even though I'm not super, 
you know, I'm not a, a, a very kind of traditional artist and I give myself tons of liberties when it comes to uh, drawing and proportion. I, you know, I do feel uncomfortable when things are off. Like that's completely true. And I know it is true for me and I know it is true for everyone that has, you know, uh, a drawing kind of ability. It's like you trust your ability but at some point, if you are not really, really looking hard at what you're trying to do and you're not remembering your basics, like it's going to bite you in the butt. It's, it's going to happen 100 out of 100 times. And what I had to do here, and I think everyone noticed, was that I had to do that middle axis. I had to think of you know, my, my uh, head as a sphere and just do that middle axis. It's kind of off axis because the uh, head is, is, is looking to, um, to the side. And I had to do that just to start feeling a little bit comfortable. Um, and even though features are not quite right, and again, I'm not somebody who's like super bothered by that because I'm, I'm actually fine if things are off, but I don't want things to be off because that's what happened to my painting. I want to be in control of the things that are off. And um, I, I would say with my work, more often than not, I am in control. Like whenever I see a distortion or whenever I sense something being a tiny bit distorted, I love that and I push it and I sacrifice, you know, the, uh, the, the sense of kind of harmony um, that, that you usually see in nature. So if you, you know, it, it's not uncommon for me to paint one eye and then paint another eye and know that they're probably not going to feel symmetrical. They are going to feel like, like something is a little off. And I find that fascinating. For me, that's, you know, that's Lucian Freud. He's, he's perfect. Or that's uh, Jericho when he was painting the, um, the people at the, um, at the uh, psychiatric institute. Um, so, so I love to do those things, but I want to know that I'm doing them for a reason. And I am very, almost painfully aware when they happen, not because, you know, it is something that I'm searching for, you know, it is, it is a sort of distortion I want to play off other shapes against, um, but it's something that, ha that happens because I'm not concentrated. Um, because I'm not following like basic rules of, uh, of drawing. And, you know, I, I, I really kick myself in the butt and say, okay, no, you know, this isn't working. And you have to be um, at least a little bit more comfortable so that when I can approach, you know, the uh, masses of color, at least I'm closer to where I want to be rather than super far and then I have to you know if I if I start um, if I start on the wrong foot I may end up with like a, a, an effective painting but I'm gonna have to hack so much at it like it's gonna be so painful it's gonna really feel like swimming up river um, instead of something that just feels natural now there are different resources to check your drawing Obviously, the most simple of them is to, dr to do it at the drawing stage. So whenever you have like a flat brush that does like nice kind of sharp uh, lines, it's easier to check everything. Uh, the thing is, I'm also super comfortable with checking my drawing while I paint my big masses um, of light and shadow. Now with this painting, what was most exciting about it is that this, there's, there's not going to be like... Uh, a, a very chiaroscuro sense of light and shadow. Uh, there's just this big blob of light. This, you know, it's it. This light is almost infecting uh, shadow. And um, and what's cool, what's really cool about it, is that the light, light itself, is actually so strong that it's not, you know, really describing form. You know, it's so overexposed, so bleached, so, so powerful that tiny shifts in, in, in form are going to disappear. Um, but the cool thing about that is that I, you know, I no longer 
only have my, you know, those axes that I was doing, those diagonals that I was doing um, to aid me in searching for my drawing. Now I have this big, big shape of light, which again, I'm actually super comfortable with. I, I feel super fine. Sometimes I even feel better <laughs> with, you know, uh, that those big shapes of color as my drawing tools rather than drawing marks, like traditional drawing marks. I, I, I do feel, you know, I feel very comfortable with my drafting skills and I feel super comfortable with like, a, you know, a charcoal in my hand, a pencil in my hand, a color pencil in my hand. But when I'm painting, I also understand or my brain also understands that painting marks are also drawing marks. And I've always repeated that to myself, like, you know, ever since I think I started painting, you know, uh, uh, drawing marks, if you think of drawing, and if you think of drawing solely as the marks that come out of, you know, these tools that can give you a fine line, like pencils or pens or color pencils, um, or charcoal uh, pencils, uh, that's a very limiting way to understand drawing. That's a very technical way to understand drawing, but conceptually it's super, super limiting. So I would, I would rather ask of you guys to start thinking of drawing. And this is not like, this is not a school of thought. Don't worry about it. Like this is, uh, this won't go against anything you already believe in about drawing. Um, but just in terms of uh, broadening that uh, definition, just think of drawing as decision, decision making. At its purest form, uh, when you draw, you're making a decision and you're doing something to evidence that decision. So if you think about it, that's like, you know, even though it sounds like a, a very broad definition, um, if you think about it, it's exactly what drawing does. Dr you know, all we try when we're drawing, all, all we're trying to do is to say, I actually want to make this and let me see if by doing this, this action, I'm able to translate what I wanted to do, that the intent that I had, this very simple intent of saying, this goes from here to here, and let me see if, if you know, after this action I, I took, let me see if that actually equates to my initial intent. So I, I actually think it's, you know, drawing in its simplest, barest, most fundamental, you know, form is about making decisions. And, um, and I, you know, I've always reminded myself that while I paint every single time, every single moment I pick up, you know, I go to the palette, I mix something, I pick up my brush and I put it down, you know, on top of, you know, my image on top of paint, um, I am making a decision and that decision has to be, um, in my eyes, it has to be something that I can grasp. It has to be quantifiable. And I'll explain why. Um, if every time I go to my palette, I have um, like a, a, a direction in mind and I have, you know, a, a, a very specific problem that I, I'm trying to solve and I mix, you know, I go into my palette and I mix trying to solve that problem and I go to my painting and I put that single decision down. Now, I, I don't paint exactly like that. I think my teacher, Max Ginsberg, he is like a master at painting, you know, very singular focused decisions. I don't paint exactly like that. I have to say that my brush sometimes kind of dances on top of the painting a little too much, a little too, you know, more than I would want to be, you know, perfectly honest. But if you think about you know, singular decisions that are trying to solve singular problems, then every time you go back to your painting and you, you know, you put paint down, you should be able to, as soon as you lift your brush, to say, okay, you know, my intent, well, you know, the reason I went to my palette was to do X. And then I go to my painting, I try to solve X, and I should be able to say, did I, was I able to solve this very specific problem that I, I you know, that I was trying to, um, to resolve? And if not, you know, hopefully the answer is yes, or hopefully the answer is yes, you're getting closer. Um, but if not, the choice that 
you know, we made should be so clear. And this is this is why I find this is why I think it's so important to understand, you know, the the um, the relevance of understanding, you know, drawing marks as decision making, um, as very again as identifiable decision making. Um, so if I'm if I'm close, that's great. But if I'm off, I should be able to say, okay, I can actually pinpoint, you know, that stroke that I you know. That stroke that I just put down, and actually, I, I can actually, you know, tell why it's off, or I can actually start asking myself, you know, the questions of why I think it's off. I'm trying to gauge why it's off. I'm trying to now untangle this problem because there's nothing, you know, there's nothing more beautiful than just this perfect brushstroke, but there's nothing more awful than this brushstroke that is just completely off. But, you know, don't panic. At that moment, just don't panic. If you are trying to make clear decisions, if you're trying to, you know, if, if you go to your palette, you're mixing a very singular decision and you're putting down something that's very, very specific, you should be able to fix it somewhat, you know, not easily, but at, at least it'll give you an opportunity to think clearly. And that's what's cool about it. So... As soon as you look at your brushstroke and you say, wow, I was off, you have to start going through, you know, your list, your, your checklist. You, you have to start saying, okay, why is it off? Is it off because my value was off? Is it off because my hue is off? Like, if my value is off, I can make something, uh, no, it's too light, I can actually tone it down. Or if it was supposed to be a mid-tone and it's too dark, I can actually lighten it up. Or if it was supposed to be my darkest, you know, one of my darker darks, and I started, you know, mixing some lighter colors in there and it got a little muddy, I can tell myself, okay, it's got to be darker. Maybe your hue is off. Maybe it had to be more yellow. It maybe it was a yellow orange and you did like a, like an orange red. So you have to, you know, take it back to the orange. Maybe it was neutral and you made it a little too cool. So you have to, you have to check your temperature or maybe, you know, it, it was, you know, you, you had your value, right? It was, let's say like a light color and your temperature was right, let's say it was cool, and your hue was right, let's say it was like a bluish purple, and you've got three out of four, and you're feeling like, okay, this is awesome, but suddenly you made it a little too saturated. So now you have to, you know, knock it back a little bit. Um, so if you go, if you go, you know, through your checklist, which honestly, it, it's, it's those four things, um, you know, is my, is my value right? Is my temperature right? Is my hue right? Is my saturation right? If you check those things, then you should be able to say, okay, I'm actually going to be able to, again, don't, don't think of it as going for that perfect brush stroke. I think that's a little, that's putting a little too much weight on your shoulders for a single stroke. That's, that's a lot, a lot of pressure. Just think about it as going, okay, I'm going to inch myself towards you know, the, the, this original intent that I, I, I had, um, this big idea, this big exciting, because it should be an exciting idea that is this driving force for this painting. It's this thing that, you know, when I saw this photo, when I saw this person, I was like, I want to paint you. Like, I, like, this is the reason that I want to paint you. And it helps to have that, you know, clear in your mind because that's going to be your guiding light like that that's what's gonna you know get you out of trouble whenever you are you know maybe um uh dedicating a little too much time on painting you know unnecessary detail you go back to this bigger idea or maybe it's a it's a feeling of you know th there's a feeling you want to get out of the expression you have in your subject matter and 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 perhaps if you you know you, you realize you're pretty you're prettying it up like you're making something just look nice and you're like no 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 I actually didn't want to do that I have to offset this because originally that's what I wanted so if you check back to this bigger broader idea that you had in mind there's usually like a, a very simple answer to um, to those questions now it doesn't mean that it's easy like there's sometimes where we're going to check our values, we're going to check our saturation, we're going to check our temperature, 
We're going to check if our hues are, are, are the ones that are right. Ugh. And, you know, sometimes it's just tough. Sometimes things are just off, and we just can't will things into being right. Sometimes we just have to go through hell with a painting, and, you know, it's it's just the way it works. Like, to get better, it doesn't mean that every single time you just want to be a pain, you know, you just want a painting to become better, that that's not going to happen. You know, you, again, you can't just will that into existence. Um, the truth is, you know, uh, better paintings come out of paintings that you, you know, that you struggled, um, that you struggled with. And, you know, it's, it's sad to hear it. And it's kind of, it takes, you know, a little bit of courage to just accept it. But many times we have to do so many crappy paintings or, or maybe at times we're just very tough on ourselves. And it's not, it's not that we're doing crappy paintings is that, you know, we, we've, we've gone through so much hell while trying to paint it that we just don't see the benefits of it by the end. You know, in the end, we just see this thing that was, it, it was such a tough time. It was, you know, and Again, I'm painting for hours here, but I've had paintings where I've struggled for weeks, months even. And, it, you know, it, 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 those paintings just suck the life out of you. They, they really, really do. But I actually believe that those are the important ones. Like, those are the ones that really, really teach you if you are willing to see them as learning opportunities. Because when we paint, and everything just falls into place. Like everything is just, you know, oh God, I hit my values like right off the bat and I laid down my light and wow, that's a great overall, you know, tone. And, you know, it works beautifully against the shadow mass that I just put. You know, when you when you have those paintings and we've all, I think, have had those, those moments uh, inside a, a, a painting session where just everything is falling into place. It's like this jigsaw puzzle and every shape is just perfectly matching the shape that's right next to it. And, but the truth is, I think those are just, you know, extraordinary moments that are there to show us like, hey, look, this is, this is what it can feel like when everything is just right. You know, this is how it feels like. But truthfully, <laughs> You know, painting usually doesn't feel that way. Painting usually feels like a struggle. It usually kicks your butt and it's like, like this one at the beginning. It's like, oh, you know, you're a little too comfortable with your drawing. No, slow down because that's not going to work. Like if you want to do this, uh, you know, properly, you have to slow down and you have to take your time and you have to find your axis and you have to find better proportions and you have to find better shapes and you know I'm not above that I don't think anyone anyone is above anything like that and you know why we're not above that first of all because I've never met an artist that you know that does incredible artwork all the time that doesn't exist I you know take that idea off your mind because those people don't exist people struggle like real people struggle I, you know, only person I've seen that doesn't struggle is like Kim Jung Ji, Kim Jung Ji. But, you know, I think he's a robot. I, I really do think he's a robot or he's an alien. I do think that if you throw water at him, like he'll just short circuit and there'll be sparks flying out. You know, I think he's here, you know, in, on Earth just to make us feel bad, just to remind us that we don't know how to draw, that he knows how to draw. And the rest of us, we just, you know, kind of squiggle like on a sidewalk. Um, but honestly, yeah, we, <laughs> we all struggle. And the cool thing about this is that there's no like um, advanced techniques on how to not struggle. You, know, you just always go back to basics. You know, whenever something's off, you either measure with your brush and you check your angles, you know, you check your proportions, um, or you just do axes, you just do very simple axes or just broader marks, like longer, broader marks. You simplify. That's the beauty of simplifying. I think we've all heard it all our lives. Just simplify, simplify, simplify. It's the truth. It is the truth. It, I mean, it is there because it's one of the biggest truths in like painting and drawing and all of art. 
just go back to basics back to basics like if you know if if you're confused back to basics you know and you could be in the fourth layer of a painting and you don't like it go back to basics reblock that in you know sergeant there's you know this uh, stories about sergeant that when he wasn't satisfied he wouldn't just simply kind of paint over something because he he understood painting as as almost like building like a staircase or like stairwell and it, you know he he was he would only be able to to go to the second step if the first one was right so if you think about it if that's your mentality and something's off in the ther- 30th step you have to you know take it all down and start from the be- you know start afresh start from the beginning because that's the only way you're going to be able to construct everything right again now that is like crazy you know that's only for crazy people you know people normal people <laughs> like me i have to like you know i'm i'm i have to just put my brushes down and say i'm going to go to bed you know this is way too much for me tonight maybe tomorrow with fresh eyes i'm going to look at it and truth is yeah or you know or maybe sometimes i'm like i think i'm flying and i'm like oh my god i hit everything today i wake up and i'm like oh my god look at this disaster like the hands are way off the face is just weird looking um you know again regular people like us we have to step back and go back to general ideas very basic shapes uh you know basic kind of for me it's just like broad diagonals broad strokes just going back to broad 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 strokes and whenever those are right then i can go you know and i'm kind of nuts because i have like uh, rigger brushes like lining brushes and I can go like super nuts and finding like the tiniest breaks in form. And sometimes I'll block in a painting and then I'll draw on top of the painting and I'll find like tiny, tiny little breaks. And I love that stuff. But again, I can only give myself license to do those things if the bigger, you know, decisions are right. If none of those are right, then forget it. Then, you know, no, no amount of like, kind of little fidgeting or like doing like really nice detail in the hands or nothing is going to save, you know, you know, uh, fundamentals that are off. So catch, like check yourself very early. Um, Always be mindful so that you can catch yourself super, super, you know, early in the beginning stages of painting because scraping down just a, you know, a wash or like an initial kind of mass of color you know, that that doesn't take courage. But when we've spent like eight hours just rendering an eye and the eye looks amazing, but it's like two inches off to the left and we know it because we always know it. We always know it. Uh, <laughs> we don't. We don't have the courage to just like scrape that eye and then start another one. We really don't because we start convincing ourselves, but that's like the best eye that I've ever made I'm not gonna scrape it I painted it once it's it's like a once in a lifetime thing it's not gonna happen again like all the planets aligned and the the angels were harping and you know everything like the whole universe wanted me to paint this amazing eye I'm not gonna do it again I can't do it again and I always tell people of course you can you did it once you're gonna be able to do it again you know why because in painting if you did it once chances are you're going to have to do it like 300 more times like in the future. So you can't just rest on your laurels and say, okay, now I did it. You know, this was amazing. And you just want to like, you know, just walk your walk and show people, you you know, you want an audience and you just want people, you know, ooing and eyeing at your, (laughs) at your amazing eye. But no, truth is, no, don't ever put yourself in, in, in that moment. Always, always, always. It's always easier to um, to adjust things at the beginning, you know. So keep in mind that, and I don't care what ability you know you know you have or what sort of level you think you are in painting. If something's not working, go back to basics. You know, check it. Check your composition. Check your shapes. Check your big, big shapes. Um, again, for me, it was about. I did something that's very, very, I think, normal, which is um, contour, outer contour was right. The shapes that were in were not corresponding to the 
the, con the what the contour was saying, you know, about the uh, the, sh the the forms, uh, the inner forms. So if there if there's a, a a disjointed feeling between what is inside and what is out, it's going to show in your painting, and it's always going to feel kind of off and uncomfortable. Um, so again, for me, it was doing a simple axis and then saying, okay, now I feel good. Just place the um, the replace the nose, the nose, uh, the mouth again, and and then go to my big mass of light and understand by that mass of light as an opportunity to redraw to say to say okay I'm gonna check my drawing I checked it with you know these initial marks I'm gonna check it again with my big mass of light and thankfully this painting as you can tell it had you know <laughs> it was about that big mass of like yellow green it was a very cool yellow so I'm using like like my uh, lemon yellow, my uh, yellow green with ultramarine blue and a little bit of alizarin, all of them cool colors. So I wanted to have like these tiny little shifts. So in the nose, there's a little bit more alizarin. In the cheeks, there's a little bit more alizarin. In the uh, lower lip, there's a little, a little bit more alizarin, but I'm keeping the same value. Like I'm, I'm, I'm actually pushing myself to hold on to the same value so I can make those shifts and those shifts can speak about tiny, tiny breaks in form which don't really exist because, again, this is like a blown out photo. It's like, the, it, it's a super, super bleached, bleached um, uh, light. So there's not going to be um, tiny little uh, 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 changes in form, like turns in form that are going to help me kind of uh, go around, you know, uh, describing um, the features. I'm going to... I'm actually uh, subjected to the very small moments of, you know, that eye socket, that upper lid, um, that upper eyelid, uh, and that, you know, that shadow mass in the eye socket, like underneath the brow, those are going to describe like crazy that eye. That has to be so, so on. And that's why I'm trying, you know, that's why I've been kind of struggling to get those moments right, you know, particularly in, in this one that I'm doing right now, I want these bigger shapes to be, to be just, just right. I want big shapes to speak about the tiniest of forms. And that's not easy. And for example, I'm doing like that tiny transition from the brow to the light, just so it doesn't feel like, um, like I'm doing stencil work. Just, to, just so it doesn't feel flat, which is very, very hard doing these sort of paintings where you have like this blown out light and then suddenly these darker shapes that are going to be your shadow. But it's a very, very binary painting. It's light shadow. But you're going to have to be creative and be mindful that there are the, the, that there's still going to be moments within form that you can make like the tiniest transitions that are going to make it very rich and they're going to make it, you know, again, feel three-dimensional, even though what you're doing is almost like this flat, you know, flat, flat portrait. Um, for me, it was, it was, it's, it's awesome because Sepp's hair here, it's, it's just a blessing. I mean, he's got, if God had hair, I think it would be that hairstyle. So I think that's just, you know, he's rocking it and, and that's just, a perfect complement for for this uh, very sharp um, contour, very sharp sh uh, shape of the face. Again, and the um, the jacket scarf, it just feels sharp again. So everything, all of this painting is about sharp, clear shapes. That's why my drawing had to be so so on, so so spot on at the beginning, because if 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 those shapes are sharp, then I have to make clear decisions. I can't just I can't just say, okay, this is gonna, this moment here is gonna be a tiny, you know, I, this is gonna be vague. So I'm gonna try to hide the fact that I don't understand, you know, what the nose looks like. Let's say, um, since they had to be sharp, and there's everything about it has to be sharp because I, it has to communicate that message, like you know, super strongly. I just can't let myself, you know, um, just, I can't feel sorry for myself and say, okay, this is gonna be a tough drawing. So no. Nah, I might as well just um, um, kind of d deal with that at a later stage in my painting. Or oh, uh, this is too much right now. I just I don't want to feel. I, I don't want to deal with my, you know, uh, um, uh, with my shortcomings right now. I just don't want to be reminded of of the things I struggle with 
you know, while I'm doing, while I'm trying to do this very cool painting that was exciting to me initially. No, like that's precisely the time that we have to deal with those shortcomings and with the things that we don't feel, you know, secure about. And we have to tackle them and we have to do it fearlessly and we have to do it intelligently also. It's not about just gathering courage and saying and going like gun ho and just, you know, fighting your way through the painting. No, you have to be intelligent. Again, if you if you try to make clear decisions, you you're also going to be able to see those decisions, to spot those decisions clearly and hopefully if you go, you know, back to your very basic checklist, you're going to be able to recognize where your mistakes lied and how to like properly, you know, put yourself on the right track again. So that was the reminder for today. You know, we're going to struggle and struggles are going to be real, but you know, we have so many weeks ahead of us. We have like 50 weeks ahead of us. So there's ample opportunity to just say, okay, you beat my ass today, but you know, I'm going to get back up on that horse tomorrow and I'm going to give it a shot. Once again, I'm going to try to do it calmly, intelligently, fearlessly. So uh, we finished uh, week one. So that was awesome. Hopefully, you know, what was exciting about this week is that every single painting looked super, super differently. Um, that's my invitation to you guys. Like every week, push yourselves to just do different things. You know, don't, again, remember, don't fall into your comfort zone. Um, next week, it's going to be a totally different thing. I mean, I'm going to tell you what it is, but, you know, it's completely different. So we, uh, <laughs> we're not going to do uh, heads. So, <laughs> so, but we're still going to do awesome painting. So I'll see you guys uh, next week. So uh, just keep painting. Keep, you know, struggle is going to be real. Keep painting, you know, keep pushing hard. And you'll see that those, those breaks are going to come. Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.